Hi, welcome to the Budget MTG Decks. All magic fun, all cards under a dollar. I'm David. I'm Stefan. And today we're going to be looking at all the green cards in Rivals of Ixalan. You're going to evaluate them for limited, like draft or sealed, or like your upcoming pre-release. And for your pre-release, you'll get four packs of Rivals of Ixalan and two packs of Ixalan. And if you want to watch the set review of Ixalan, you just click on the link. Exactly. We're going to be looking at... I hear that I say exactly a lot every single time we do that part. So that's just a little bit of a reminder. I should stop saying exactly, but I will say that we do evaluate these cards according to our three tiered system our tier one those are the bombs those are the unconditional removal cards these are the cards that are going to be winning you the game tier two excellent cards if you're already in this color it's an auto include and otherwise they push you into a color if you've got multiples tier three are the filler cards we want to make sure we got a nice smooth mana curve we're missing some drops we look at this category and finally all the rest of the cards we're going to put those aside so now without further ado let's have a look at all the common cards our first green common is Jade Bearer. One green, it's a 1-1 one, one Merfolk Shaman. Like we said before, 1 mana, 1-1s, one, we don't really like it. Maybe it's a good ability. When Jade Bearer ends the battlefield, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target on another target Merfolk you control. So not really. It's a 1-1 one, one that can boost something else. So you have to want to play it later, and else the body is um, really bad. And is the plus 1 plus 1 counter really worth it? Because it has to be another Merfolk, and that's why I want to put it aside. Yeah, exactly. There, I said exactly again. Uh, as it's important to remember, and of course, uh, viewers have also pointed out, there are scenarios where this card is good. And yeah, of course, if you've got this one, and then you got the blue Merfolk, which has unblockable, then you first play that one, and then you play this one, and also you got a 2 2 unblockable. And. Uh, so, so yeah, obviously there are always, and that's with all these cards that we put aside, there are situations where they are good, and that's why they're called situational cards. But it doesn't mean that in most of the times, in most of the decks, in 90% in of the scenarios where you have just regular cards that you're taking out of packs, that you'll be able to construct these ideal scenarios or that the game will go in such a way that the scenario will be relevant. So that is why it's important to remember that when we put cards aside, it's not because we don't see a scenario in which it can be good, it's because we just think that in most scenarios, you will not be able to achieve this ideal scenario. Because, yeah, scenario as well. because we try to give a guideline about how to make a good deck, and if you only draw Merfolk, then yeah, then all the Merfolk cards get a lot better. But that's, like we say, situational. All right, <clears throat> after the little rant, let's move on to the next one. That is Guild Grow Stalker for one and a green. It's a 2-1 Merfolk Warrior. And this guy can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. So we're going to put this as a tier three. Why? Because uh, I don't like the body very much, a 2-1 for two. Uh, because, of course, it will die to the 1-1 one, one vampire tokens, for example. However, it can be used as a filler. You don't have any other two drops. It will also trade with bears, and you can attack with it efficiently early on in the game. So it is an acceptable uh, filler card, although I'm not too excited to play it. And especially because it cannot be blocked by the 1-1 one, one vampires. So that's also oh, yeah. a plus. Yeah, exactly. So usually because of that, but mm. this one, not the case. So it's better. Yeah. So that's a bit better. Plummet, one on a green instant, destroy target creature with flying. It's situational, so that's why I put it aside. Yeah. Next we have naturalize for one in a green. It's an instant. We're gonna be able to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Same story again. Yeah, if your opponent is playing tons of enchantments, tons of artifacts, yes, then you can cyber it in, but don't main board this because it won't be relevant most of the time. Yeah. Aggressive Urge, one and a green, instant, target creature get plus one plus one until end of turn, draw a card. Two mana, plus one plus one, I don't think it's good enough to want an inclusion, and I just want to put it aside, even though it does cycle, but still the two mana and only plus one plus one, I, don't, I think I want to put it aside. Yeah, I think we've had this discussion already when we're looking at all the white cards. I believe when it comes to combat tricks, you want to have at least a plus two, plus two bonus for it to be worth it because then you're going to not be able to only um, trade when it's not expected, but you'll be able to have your opponent lose a creature and you won't lose a creature. And that's the scenario that you want to be in. And just the plus one, plus one uh, won't be sufficient in most of the cases. Then we have Hardy Veteran for one and a green. It's a two, two for two, human, human warrior. And as long as it's your turn, this guy gets plus zero, plus two. 
the ability may not even be there. I mean, you can when it's attacking, it's a little bit tougher to kill, which is nice. I mean, it is better than just a 2-2, but it just the ability does not push it on into tier 2 category. I'm very happy to play. This is right on curve. Uh, on the attack, it allows you to be a little bit more aggressive, so you're going for red or green, uh, a little bit more of an aggressive strategy. This guy fits in there perfectly, but even if that wouldn't be there, it would still be fine because the 2-2-2 two, two two is always okay. Yeah, and the thing is... A 2-4 blocker is really good, yeah. but a 2-4 attacker is just a lot less. Yeah. Oraska fullback, 2 and a green, it's a 4-2 dinosaur vanilla. Tier 3, 3 um, mana cost, 4 power, that's nice. The 2 toughness, I don't really like, but for 4 power, it's good filler. Yeah. Uh, first of all, we see that this is a Dimetrodon, so people will, of course, purists will argue that this was not a classical dinosaur, it came in before the dinosaur was extinct, after the dinosaurs came, uh, but uh, Ixalan is a fantasy world, which means that anything that remotely looks like a dinosaur can, of course, be a dinosaur, so we're going to call this a dinosaur, even though... You're actually playing a fantasy game? Are you serious? This is not historically, but it, but it angers me that the card from um, uh, Ether Revolt, the Frill Sailback or something like that, that's just a lizard. Well, it looks exactly the same, doesn't matter. Point about this card is that normally two toughness creatures, with, like two fours, we usually put those aside. You may think, hey, why are we not putting this one aside? It's because those are usually uh, converted mana cost four or higher sometimes and that makes it really annoying to have to sacrifice our or sacrifice to have to trade our four converted mana cost creature to a 2-2 two -two bear that our opponents have in this case of course it will also die to a 2-2 two -two bear but the fact that we're just paying one extra mana for an increase of two uh, power i think makes it worth it as an inclusion because a lot of things only have four toughness then you can trade up and that's really nice yeah Jungle Ball Pioneer. Two and a green. It's a 2 2 Merfolk Scout. And when he enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 blue Merfolk creature token with hexproof. Tier 3. It's 3 mana, a 2 2 and a 1 1. So you get 2 bodies, 3 power. That's good enough for a tier 3. Yeah, would have been nicer. Would have been uh, a 3 3 for 3. Yeah. But still, I mean, it's still pretty nice that it's got it over those uh, over those 2 bodies. Of course, the, uh, the hexproof on a 1 1 is not really relevant. Knight of the Stampede is next. Three and a green. So for four mana, we get a two four. All right, I'm already happy with that. That's already our yoked ox. That's already a very standard creature. Four mana for a two four. Does a lot of work, blocks bears. Great. Also, dinosaur spells you cast cost two less to cast. Okay, this is this might as well not uh, read there in uh, limited. Yes, there's going to be scenarios. Yes, you can draft heavily into uh, a draft or, or in your pre released uh, sealed. Uh, heavily into your uh, dinosaurs make sure you got that stuff but in essence you got to assume that you won't have the dinosaurs or when you do have the dinosaurs you won't have this one and in the end you're still happy to play this because it's a fine price with a potential upside when you do pull that dinosaur later in the game exactly it will make give you more reason to play dinosaurs as if you need it you don't need it you don't need it it's a dinosaur or a dimetrodon <laughs> or a pterodactyl <laughs> or a plesiosaur we go to the next one jadecraft artisan Three and a green, a three three Merfolk Shaman, and when he enters the battlefield, tall creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Four mana, three three, already a um, decent body, and then it's something gets plus two plus three, plus two plus two when it comes in. That's really nice, but still a tier three. Yeah. Yeah, it's just you're just always to have this is just solid. You yeah, know, it's just a solid card. Even if you don't have a target, you still don't feel bad about playing this. Yeah. You can still just play it on curve, make sure you got keep that pressure going, make sure you spend that uh, card, spend that four mana to make sure that you're not uh, yeah, putting yourself in a bad situation. Uh, you don't have to keep holding on to this card to until you get a good target for it. Because yeah, without the ability, it would still be a good tier two card. Yeah. Then we go hunt the weak. Uh, well, we don't actually go hunt the week, but we go to hunt the week for three and a green. <clears throat> it, excuse me, it is a uh, sorcery. We're going to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control, and then that creature is going to fight target creature we don't control. So it's going to make one of our creatures bigger, and that's permanently. So that's not just till the end of turn. It's a counter, and additionally, it's, it's essentially removal. We're playing in green. We've got this card. We're going to have relatively large creatures. This creature is going to become even bigger, so it increases the chance of being able to almost guarantees the ability to uh, kill the thing which is of equal mana cost and not lose the creature ourselves and of course has the potential to trade up with this card. Four mana is high for this effect but it is in green and this is pretty much as good as uh, green removal gets so that's a tier two. You always include this if you're in green. Yeah, 
if it was any other color, then <coughs> maybe not. But removal wise, this is what green always does. And if you're in green, you're always gonna play it because this will be your green removal. Yeah. And what's also very cool is that the picture is actually taken from a GoPro that a goblin had before it got gobbled up. So this is the last thing that that, that first goblin saw. Yeah. Interesting makes, fact. Makes making the picture <coughs> easier. It does, yeah. Unfortunately, you do get gobbled, but you know, mm. worth it for the shot. Overgrown armor saw. Three and two green. It's a 4-4 four, four dinosaur, which is already good. And enrage, whenever overgrown armor saw is dealt damage, create a 1-1 one, one green supporting creature token. Which isn't always that relevant, but a 4-4 four, four is pretty difficult to get rid of, so you most likely make a lot of 1-1s, one, which are just bonus on the already good body on its own. Yeah. So tier 3. Tier yeah. three. Good yeah. tier three. I'm, yeah, it's really high on the tier three yeah. level. I think uh, it's not tier two because it doesn't really, uh, it's not an automatic include and it doesn't really, <clears throat> a couple of these don't really win you the game, but it's, it's close to it. It's yeah. really strong, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. still like the one ones don't really do that much as we said, so that's why we don't auto include it. Yeah, but think about how few creatures are four fours in the set. Exactly. Know? But you also got to look at the uh, Ixalan, of course. Yeah, uh, but it still trades with the four two. Yeah, three mana. Really true. Yeah, that makes that one even better. Then we move on to the last of the commons, and that is Colossal Dreadmaw, a very familiar card. It is uh, for four and two green, so for uh, six mana, it is a six six with trample. Now the fact that it's got trample pushes it over the edge. It it would have been a uh, maybe tier two or maybe even tier three without uh, the trample, but the tier the the trample really pushes it into tier one category because now all of a sudden this game can't this game this card can't be a chump block and you're going to be winning the game with this. We've seen this card win games, and it's just an absolute house. So if you are in green, if you got uh, two of these guys, then you have to be playing them because uh, if they don't answer it. They're dead in a couple of turns. Yeah, 6-6 six, six with Trample. Yeah. I always really like my Tramples and are such a big body and the 6 toughness is so difficult to get rid of. Yeah, all joking aside that they reprinted this card. I mean, it could have been different art, but it is a very good card yeah. in Limited and it will do uh, loads of work. That is the last of the comments. Have a look at the uncommons. The first of our uncommons is Enter the Unknown. For a single green, it's a sorcery. We're going to have target creature we control explore, which means we're going to reveal the top card of our library. We're going to look at it. If it's a land, it goes into our hand. But if it is not a land, then we're going to put a plus one, plus one counter on the creature, and then we can either choose to put that card back on top of our library or move it to the bottom of our library. So it's kind of like, kind of like a scry, and we get a plus one, plus one counter. But it also potentially gives us an extra card, which guaranteed would be a land. Uh, we can also play an additional land this turn. So if we did play a land before or, or not, we can always just play those two lands then it, that we grab. I would say tier three, um, it has the potential, I do like the fact that it's and the plus one plus one counter. And of course you get the, uh, you get the kind of the scry and one mana is a very small investment. So um, yeah, if you wanna go into ramping, this will also help you to be able to play, even if you didn't get a land, extra land from this card, you, you might have an extra land in your hand when you're playing this early game. You can just, uh, you can just play that one. You have to watch out because you actually do have to target a creature. So you have to have a creature on the battlefield. Yeah, you can't point. even target an opponent's creature because no. it's you control. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. Next one, Thunder, Thunder Herd Migration. One and a green is a sorcery and has additional card, uh, cost to cast Thunder Herd Migration. Reveal a dinosaur card from your hand or pay one mana extra. And you can then search your library for a basic land card, put it in a battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. It's a pretty good card for two mana and also still a decent card for three mana. That's why tier three. You will not always need this kind of cards. You don't need, need to mana ramp, but we have a lot of big creatures so and love ma big mana cost creatures. So I think this is actually a good filler. Yeah, don't worry about having the dinosaur. It's just fine even without yeah. uh, revealing the dinosaur card. Next up is Cherished Hatchling for one and a green. It is a two one. So the body's already you know on the edge right there. And when it dies, you may cast a dinosaur spell this turn as though it had flash. And whenever you cast a dinosaur spell this turn, it gains whenever this creature enters the battlefield, you may have it fight another target creature. It's not um, only one dinosaur. You can cast dinosaur spells. Ah, yeah. So any dinosaur spells. Yeah, but you still have to pay the mana cost. So the chances of being able to play multiples is, of course, uh, slightly unlikely. 
Um, but mostly it's just fine filler because of the body with a potential upside to be able to surprise our opponents. Plus, if we leave our mana open when we attack with this creature, uh, we can um, people can have the, the idea that we do have a dinosaur. Even if we don't have the dinosaur card in the hand, they may not want to block it. They may not want this creature to die because they think, oh my god, then they're going to flash in whatever creature of you know five mana that they have open, and that's going to kill my my bomb that I need, for example. So it can be used as a, as a threat, even if you don't have anything, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it just... When it dies and then you can just cast anything with flesh and then it fights, that's so good. Yeah. Especially because the dinosaurs are so big. Yeah, true. But you do have to, you know, have dinosaurs. Yeah, okay. Still, without the ability, it's still a tier 3. Yeah, still filler. Swift Warden. 1 and 2 green. It's a 3 3 Merfolk Warrior with flesh. And when he enters the battlefield, target Merfolk good control gains hexproof until end of turn. So it can be a 3-3 three, three, um, Merfolk Warrior with Hexproof when it comes in. Even without the ability, um, the other ability, 3-3 three, three for 3 with Flash is really good. Tier 2, Surprise Blocker, it's kind of a removal combat trick. Exactly, I want exactly what I wanted to yeah. say. I'm very excited to play. Not only is the mana cost and the body already very uh, aggressively costed, mm -hmm. but also the fact that it really does work kind of a pseudo uh, combat trick removal because they're gonna attack and then bam, you can kill thing, and then in your turn, bam, you can attack with it as well. They're not expecting that. It does a lot of work. Sure, you need to have that two green, yeah. but in limited, you're probably gonna be playing two two colors anyway, and then having two of a certain color is definitely doable. Yeah, it, it should be doable and. The Merfolk I'm giving a hexproof is just gravy, like protecting your Merfolk, other Merfolk from removal, just great. Yeah, if you have that, but even if you don't, still exactly. really, really good. Trashing Bontodon. 1 and 2 green, a 3-4 dinosaur, and for 1 mana, sacrifice Trashing Bontodon. You can destroy target artifact or enchantment. The ability, not relevant, but 3 mana, 3-4, three, that is relevant. Super relevant. Tier 2. Yeah, this is... This is crazy, actually, when you yeah. think about it, how much power and toughness this creature has. It, they try to throw you off by giving an ability where you think, oh, one mana, sacrifice it, I don't want to do that. Oh, this is maybe not a great card. But if you just look at the mana cost and the power and toughness, it is insane how powerful this is. And this card is really going to be uh, hard to deal with this early in the game. If you can put this down turn three, people are going to have a big problem. They're not going to be able to block it. They're going to have to double, triple block it. Who knows what they're going to have to do. And it's, uh, it's going to win games, I think. Yeah, it's just a good card. Yeah. Then we have Cacophodon. That is for three and a green. So for four mana, it is a two five. It's also got Enrage, which means whenever this guy is dealt damage, we're going to tap target permanent. Solid card. The ability... Um, oh, sorry. Untap target permanent. Did I say tap? You said tap. Untap target permanent. So it kind of give, it can give uh, something un, uh, vigilance, let's say, um, when it gets uh, dealt damage, which is okay, but mostly just the fact that for four mana, getting that two five is really just a very decent body. And I think you're always going to be happy playing this. Yeah. And you can also um, attack with it when it gets blocked. You can also untap mana with it. Yeah. So that's, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. So it's just not only vigilance, but it just doesn't say non land. So no, it's just, just a permanent, like. any yeah. permanent. Yeah. Very good. Nice solid. Forerunner of the Heralds. 3 and a green. It's a 3 2 Merfolk Scout. And when he enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a Merfolk card, reveal it, shuffle your library, and put a card on top of it. And whenever another an Merfolk enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Forerunner of the Heralds. A th um, 3 2 for 4 isn't as great, but if you have a Merfolk, then you can search up, and then it will be a 4 3 for 4, and that's actually decent to, um, to be. Uh, tier 3. Yeah, yeah. This is, remember, we have to remember that when it searches for that uh, Merfolk, we don't draw it. So it goes yeah. on top of our library, so it doesn't give us any advantage there. But the fact that it is essentially, as long as we have one or two other Merfolk, which we may not draw in a regular game, but because we have four, a Forerunner of the Heralds, we will be able to get to it. So you don't need to have a lot of Merfolk. Mm -hmm. You just you can just search for it. Just having a few Merfolk in your deck means that this is pretty much guaranteed a 4-3. Yeah, exactly. And even with more Merfolks, it just gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. So that's really nice. So good solid tier 3. Exactly. Then we have Crested Herd Collar for 3 and 2 green. It is a 3-3 three, three dinosaur. Very nice. It's also got Trample. Great. We don't see a lot of creatures with Trample, so that's always uh, that's always nice to see that. And whenever this guy enters the battlefield, create a 
3-3 dinosaur token with trample and another guy with trample wait a second so that means that for five mana we actually get six power and toughness with trample on the battlefield that is super super strong uh, it's not as strong as let's say having it on a 6-6 six, six body because it's spread over two bodies that's why it's not tier two but it is you know it's tier three but it's really high because of the extremely good deal we got over not only the power and toughness but also that trample which is going to make a big difference yeah just having two three trees is already good yeah for that uh, for that mana yeah. cost absolutely and the trample is just gravy strength of the pack is our last uncommon it's a four and uh, four generic and two uh, green sorcery put two plus one plus one counters on each creature you control you probably have only a couple creatures and then for six mana to get um, two counts on it i don't think that's enough no it's just too expensive and i rather play a six six for the temple would be way that was better. six mana yeah so that would be so much better think about how bad it is if you only have a couple of creatures then it's just you're just getting so little value for the uh, mana investment and if you have like a top deck this then it's just really bad and then having a solid creature which will not be as great um as a blowout but still like this is a kind of high high risk high reward kind yeah. of a card you know if you're stalled and you've got the same creatures and you've got like 20 creatures okay you won't have but if you got a whole <laughs> bunch of creatures then yes this would be good but the thing is what about all the times when that is not the case yeah that is it for the uncommons let's have a look at the rares the first of our rares is Deep Root Elite for one and a green. We've got a 1-1 one, one Merfolk Warrior. And whenever another Merfolk enters the battlefield under our control, we're going to put a plus one, plus one counter on target Merfolk we control. So it can either be itself or another Merfolk. And again, classic example of if you have crazy synergy, this is great. If you're in Constructed, this is great. However, in Limited, I just don't see the chance of this thing growing very large uh, at all, actually. So uh, I would say just put it aside. Next one, Wayward Sword Tooth. It's two and a green. It's a 5-5 five, five dinosaur. For three mana, 5-5, five, five, it must have something. And it does. Like, something bad. <laughs> <laughs> it has Ascent, and you may play an additional land on each of your turns. All good things. Additional lands on every turn, so that means you get uh, faster on your Ascent. But it has a clause that says, Wayward Sword Tooth can't attack or block unless you have the city's blessing which means it can only do something for you late game and early game it doesn't really do anything for you you can play an extra land but after one extra land or two extra land that's everything yeah and you waste a card on it so you just put it aside yeah it's 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 got a big chance of uh being an investment that won't pay off during the game yeah. with the hope that it will pay off later at what point, which point you might be dead already because you made this poor investment early game. Exactly, it's it's kind of okay when you uh, have an early game, play it on turn 3 when you have a lot of land in uh, in your hand, but then what are you really doing? Not yeah. anything at all. Yeah, very risky. Jade Light Ranger is next for 1 and 2 green. It's a 2-1 Merfolk Scout, and when this guy enters the battlefield, we're going to explore two times for this card which means of course it has the potential to get two plus one plus one counters or it gets us two lands or one and a counter and of course it's got the uh, the kind of the scry stuff in there the thing is this is again a, a, a high risk high reward difficult to wouldn't really uh, describe it that way but you it's got a high variance you don't really know what's going to happen but still uh, tier three i think most of the time you will get at least one time the plus one plus one counter and one time a land which is actually not a bad deal so i would say tier three put it in a filler but don't expect any miracles from this card even without like three mana two one not really happy about it but having the um, or the scry or or draw that's actually not bad at all yeah so tier three it will not be auto include but Hey, if you have the spot, I would play it. Solid, yeah, solid. World Shaper. Three in a green. It's a 3-3 three, three Merfolk Shaman, which is already tier 3. And when he attacks, you may put the top 3 cards of your library into your graveyard. It's a May ability. And when he dies, put all land cards from your graveyard onto the battlefield tapped. Both of the effects not really that relevant. Unless you're milling yourself constantly, then when he dies, it may be relevant. Also, maybe not. 
And of course, at what point in time in the game is this happening? You're already playing this turn four. Mm. So what, like later turn six or something, you may get some extra lands. Do you really need those extra lands at that point? If you if you was um, saving up for your big dinosaur, which you may or may not have milled. Yeah, <laughs> it's also risky, huh? Yeah, but tier three, uh, three, three for four is still decent. Yeah, even without the abilities. Yeah. Yeah. Path of Discovery, three and a green. So for four mana, it's an enchantment. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it explores. Okay, so in theory, this seems very good. You think, oh, every turn, we're gonna, I'm going to be playing a creature, and then it's going to get either bigger, or we're going to get those lands, and bam, we're going to be drawing into value, all our stuff is going to be great. However, the problem is, once again, we've, sp we've spoken about this before, about uh, turn four, that it's an important turn, and we do want to do something, which means we want something, uh, we want to put something down which has impact on the game that turn. And with Path of Discovery, what will happen is we put it down, and it does absolutely nothing and it'll only do something in the turn after that we also actually have a creature we draw a creature and we can actually play it so there's there's again too many scenarios where it actually uh it costs us a card costs us mana costs us the turn and we don't actually get any real value from it until maybe may, way way later and that is not what we want we want to be able to make an impact as soon as possible in the game yeah and you still need to have to cast a creature and then expose one and then to get a, a value out of it you have to cast a lot of creatures and if you're only drawing lands or anything else then it's still not actually doing anything at all no, i feel really bad yeah i put it aside tender shoot dryad four and a green it's a two two dryad with ascent and at the beginning of each upkeep so your upkeep and opponent's upkeep you create a one one green supporting creature token as opponents have plus two plus two as long as you have the city's blessing even without you play it to uh, two two which isn't that great and opponent's turn you get a one one which you already three power in your turn one one so for four power on turn uh, five or like turn six your turn six that's already really good and it's only getting better every single turn you don't have to do anything with it yeah and the cool thing is, of course, that it's going to trigger its ascend really fast because yeah. you're actually every turn, let's say you're getting two permanents again because in your uh, in your uh, upkeep and their upkeep, so every kind of your turn, you're getting two extra. And that's going to race you into, especially if you're already on turn five when you play, this is going to get you into the ascend really fast. And then all of a sudden, those things are three threes. Yeah, because you played this to five, so if six permanents, then in your next turn, it's already eight if you had, don't have anything else. So that's actually really nice. Very cool, very cool. Tier 1. This will actually win you the games. Yeah, beautiful. Then we have another card that can win games, and that is uh, Galta Primal Hunger for 10 and 2 green. So there's a whopping 12 mana. It is a 12-12 dinosaur, though, and it also has Trample. Okay, how are we going to cast this thing? Well, it actually costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of the creatures you control. So in theory, if you were to have a couple of small creatures and their total power was 10, then you could play this for just two green mana, which is, of course, really nice. It doesn't become any less than uh, two mana because you'll still always have to pay uh, the green mana cost in the spell, but still, even if you can just uh, play this for six mana, then you're still laughing all day long. Because a 12 12 was trample, it's just game breaking. It just ends it. Yeah, and you're playing green. You want to play creatures, you want to play big creatures. So yeah. that's so good. It will just be cheaper and cheaper. And it's a 12 12 with trample. <sighs> it's so beautiful. And the art is just also amazing. Yeah. Tier one, you're gonna play this. Beautiful. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to the mythic. Our mythic is Polyraptor, 6 and 2 green, it's a 5-5 five five dinosaur with enrage and whenever Polyraptor is dealt damage, create a token that is a copy of Polyraptor. And those also have the enrage that create copies, so it gets insane really fast. They don't really want to block this because then you go come back even bigger. And if they do block it, you get a copy of it so it doesn't actually die if they got rid of it and they most likely won't yeah so this will win you the game if it comes on the table you block a small thing you get bigger things you attack with it you get more of them they will eventually just die yeah uh, yeah I, I can't even add anything to it i'm just in awe of the power in limited yeah. of this card sure eight mana 
is steep. It will take a long time to get there. It won't just be turn eight, you know, because it's, you, you're not going to hit your land every single turn. So it will be much, much later. Make sure you've got some mana ramp. Make sure you've got some early stuff so you can kind of stall the board uh, early game. Because if you can get to this card, it's just ridiculous. Exactly. And just, I, I don't really know what to say about I'm it. Flabbergasted. It's, just, it's yeah. just amazing. There's so many scenarios. There's so many scenarios in which it gives you so much value. And there's so little scenarios in which your opponent can actually deal with it. Exactly. And a 5-5, five, five, you can't really get rid of it easily. Yeah, anyway, yeah crazy yeah. beautiful beautiful i love it all right that's it let's move on to the conclusion in conclusion green as usual has very solid creatures we're, we uh we've come to uh, expect that of green in limited that we've got good valued creatures of very high power and toughness for the mana cost with not a lot of very special or interesting abilities there are a few bombs in here which can win you the game which is very nice some really good bombs exactly and we have some really solid filler cards that are just yeah just aggressively costed for power and toughness but if you're looking for really game winning abilities and and uh, sneaky tricks and stuff like that this green doesn't have any of that the removal is you know i mean it, usually there's very little removal here there's almost it's virtually non-existent in green only hunt the weak that's it so you know you can't expect to be to have any of that so you're gonna have to look for other colors for your uh, proper evasion for your removal to maybe do some card draw you're gonna for everything else that you want to do in the in uh, in your deck that you can be building uh, green will not be able to provide that but uh, to fill out some slots with some very well costed creatures yeah green can help you with that but i'm not uh, i'm not too excited about green this time no not really like we're excited about the wares and the mythics but that's not the things that you should be excited about in limited you should look for your solid creatures in common and uncommon absolutely yeah that's a, that's a mistake that uh, people often make that they look towards the uh, the rares and the mythics to see what the best cards are in the set but the problem is when you're playing limited you only get a handful of those cards and as we saw already in every color and that that's always the case the rares and the mythics have cards that are simply not made for limited so you can't expect them to be to be good it's not that they make cards and they think oh, it's, it's a terrible card because we like to make bad cards it's not the case at all these are very good cards just not in this format and you will be opening them and you can't expect to build any kind of strategy around uh mythics and uh, the the rares you just have to look at the comms and comms that's going to be your deck and be happy if you if you pull a rare that's a nice bomb you got a 12 12 trampler awesome put it in but you can't build your deck around that because you just won't draw it that's one just only cut one card exactly so the rest also has to be solid yeah and green just doesn't seem to have that uh today no, unfortunately. All right. Well, uh, now we'd like to invite you to head on over to patreon.com slash budget MTG decks. Patreon is a special website where you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. And you'd be helping us to make more videos and improving the quality of our videos. Next to that, of course, there's different tiers and awesome rewards. So head on over to patreon.com slash budget MTG decks to check that out. Now, of course, we'd also like to remind you that we are social in the sense that no, we don't interact with other people in the real world, but you can reach us over digitally over on our uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can talk to us there. And of course, also uh, subscribe to us here on YouTube for the most powerful decks and advice everyone can afford. If you have questions, if you wanna have comments, feedback, all of that good stuff go ahead and join us on one of our uh, social media accounts and talk to us there and we have discussions there about cards as well so check out all that good stuff and candid pictures of us when we're just hanging around so that's always fun that's it thanks for watching i'm david and i'm stefan and this is budget mtg decks